What is up guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Pure Panorama. This video, we are gonna be jumping right into removing the starter out of the 24 valve Cummins and rebuilding it. That's right, you guys requested a starter rebuild over a starter replacement for the 01 24 valve Cummins. A few videos back when I asked you guys in the video, a lot of you guys said rebuild, 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 and we all know that that is most likely the best route to go rather than buying a starter from your local parts store. There are nothing but horror stories with those starters that you buy from the parts stores just crapping out shortly after you put them on the truck. So the best thing to do is rebuild these things or buy an OEM spec starter and put that on. But we know that those OEM spec starters can run a, a pretty price tag. It'd be a pretty penny for you to get one and rebuilding it is far less inexpensive and a more budget friendly way to go so that is what we are gonna do for you guys today and see if it fixes our issue the other morning I came out to go to work went to fire up the truck did my usual routine just like always and turn the key to the run position to let the fast cycle and prime the system let the grid heater cycle so that I could start up the truck and when I went to turn the key to crank it over I got nothing. I didn't get a click. I didn't get anything out of the truck. All I got was the radio shutting off, the glow shift gauges, lights cutting out, and the blower motor cutting out. So the truck didn't want to do anything. It did not want to fire over, and I figured right then and there at that point, my starter finally took a crap. You guys know as of recently, we've been having a slow cranking problem with the 24 valve, and it sounded like the batteries were either dead or it was the starter. Seems how we just replaced the batteries a few months back I didn't think that that was the problem so a couple weeks back I had went and had them tested just to double check and make sure that the alternator was working everything was charging and that the batteries were good and lo and behold everything was good just like I suspected so that pointed me in the direction of the starter so we are going to get that thing pulled out which I'm not really going to show you too much of doing that just know that it is three 10 millimeter 12 point bolts that hold it into the truck your best bet is to probably start with the upper bolt, the one on top. You can either try and tackle that from up in the engine bay or down below the truck. Either way is probably just as easy. A lot of people say it's easier to get it from up top because it's too hard to get from down underneath the truck. But I found that it was easier to get underneath the truck because those things are wrenched down pretty tight. So I was able to get more leverage on it from under the truck where I just felt around, got the socket and the ratchet on it and just was able to press upward to crack it free once you get that top bolt out go ahead and crack your two bottom ones loose hold on to your starter so it doesn't fall and cave your head in and then you can pull the starter out and do what you need to do whether you're gonna replace it with a new one or rebuild it with new contacts and clean out all the guts of it I've actually filmed all of the stuff that I needed to film for this video so let me show you what I'm talking about with that upper bolt real quick and then we'll get into the rebuild process of the starter and I'll see you back here at the end to close out the video so that is the top bolt on the starter right there so what you're looking at is the blue line is a fuel line the other one right below it with the oil on it is the crankcase breather and then that is the top bolt for the starter right there uh, and like I said I'm showing you this from up top you can get to it from up top and it might be easier for some guys to reach it from up here but I found it to be just as easy if not easier to get it from down below so there's a better shot for you you can see the breather tube and the fuel line coming up and that top bolt right there 17 millimeter socket that will pop that nut and separate your wire here and then you need a 10 millimeter to loosen these two bolts up here you do not want to touch these two Phillips head screws yet because I believe those are holding the brushes or armature stuff together underneath this cap here this is where the armature and the brushes and all that crap the magnets all that stuff is down inside here so don't pop those two Phillips head screws out just yet get these 10 millimeter bolts out and then you can pull this off and just diagnose it see how dirty it is then you can pop those two Phillips head screws out and clean everything as needed and put it back together <laughs>
So like I said guys, just pull out those two 10 millimeter bolts, then you can pull this off and get your armature out. And this right here is, believe it or not, copper and then this part here is steel so this is actually held into here by magnets which are held in by these Phillips screws here so you do not want to separate those in the beginning you don't want to take them out at all uh, just separate everything with those two 10 millimeter bolts and then get a good look down in there to see what it looks like you can clean all that out by spraying brake clean in there so you can probably just leave those magnets right in place but once this is off then you can pull these two Phillips heads out right here and go ahead and clean up your brushes and everything that are in this cap and looking down in here I'm wishing that I would have got the kit that came with the new brushes, uh, but unfortunately I could not get that shipped up here as quickly as I could just get these contacts and a new plunger. So that is why we chose to go this route with the new contacts and plunger. But we'll see what cleaning this thing up does first. Uh, we'll get everything cleaned up and looking good so that it makes good contact. And then we'll put in these new contacts and plunger over here into this guy and put it back together and hopefully that will do its job. It'll make this thing work properly again. For right now, we just gotta get the truck back up and running. And like I said, I could not get the other parts shipped in as quickly as I could get these contacts from Geno's. <laughs> So we got the armature all cleaned down with some brake clean. You can see that looks much better. And I just used a green scuff pad here and went with the with the scratches that are already on here, just twisting this in my hand like so with the scuff pad and clean that copper right up. So now you guys can see that that is copper. It actually looks like copper, unlike before where it was all gunked up and filthy. We pulled the cap off from here with our brushes and all that, and well, that is absolutely disgusting. Caked with a bunch of stuff that looks like grease and stuff that shouldn't be there because it should not be there. And the reason it looks like grease is because it's probably just years of oil and diesel fuel that leaked from the fuel filter down into the starter and then collected dirt and everything else that would get up inside here. But yeah guys, this is, uh, this is what we're working with for the time being. So we're gonna have to just clean this up and put it back together as is and hope for the best for the moment. And if we uh, run into any more trouble with it, then like I said, we'll take care of that when the time comes. And just like that guys, we got our armature back in. Everything is making contact, even though these couple of contacts were worn down pretty decent. You need two hands to do it. You gotta kind of press them in with your fingers in order to slip it down over the copper winding here on the armature uh, and get your brushes back in place. So we got all that done. Now we should be able to go ahead and put our cap back on and what we can do to try and get our holes lined up to put those Phillips head screws back in and attach the cap to the brushes here is turn our armature a little bit and see how it will rotate those brushes around. That's how we're gonna line up our holes for our cap and get our screws back into it. So let's see if we can't get that done real quick and then we can move on to replacing the other contacts.
So there's that. That's how you pull apart your armature and your brushes if you need to replace them or just clean everything up and get better contact surfaces. That is what you need to do and that's how you do it. Now that we got it all put back together, we're gonna go ahead and set this thing to the side. It's all cleaned up. So we're gonna put it over here and pull this guy over, get this cleaned up and put our new contacts and our new plunger in here and then we should be able to put everything back together and hopefully go get this reinstalled back on the 24 valve. Okay, so the contacts in here really don't look all that bad, to be honest. Yes, these are a little bit worn down, but it looks like they were most likely done at some point, and this thing has probably been rebuilt. We are this far, so we are gonna put in these new contacts here. But for now, let's get these old contacts out of here, put in the new plunger, and we'll uh, put this thing back together. This should be pretty basic. You just gotta pop these nuts free right here. These contacts will drop out of here and then you just put it back together the way it comes apart. Very straightforward and simple task to do. So let me get that done and we'll catch up with you in a second. All right guys, so we got our motor side contact already all swapped out and done. The old contact on that side was still actually pretty decent. There's a bit of good meat left on that. The battery side here, uh, not so much. That one is looking a little bit worn, but still, still has some good meat left to it. Whoever had this thing apart before, and yes, this thing definitely was apart before, they put it back together in the wrong order and left a few things out. Like this little piece of paper here is supposed to go in when you put this contact in and there's a little rubber o-ring that is supposed to be on this battery side too and they had that on the inside of this casing and it's supposed to actually go on the outside to help seal that up and weatherproof it so we're going to make sure it gets all put back together the right way but somebody did rebuild this thing in the past and well, they failed and did it wrong. So I'm glad that we are doing this now and putting in new parts so that it is done correctly. So what I'm gonna do now is actually take this small contact off of this stud and these are the studs that your wires are gonna hook up to and I'm gonna put this bigger contact on. This big contact actually came with the plunger and these smaller ones came with these new studs here for our cables, our battery cable and whatnot. So I'm gonna take this small one off, put this bigger one on so we have more contact surface for the plunger and then pop this stud back in and we should be good. And then we'll put it all back together and try and beat the daylight out here and get this starter put back in the truck. I'm running out of time so we gotta make this snappy. That's the price I pay for trying to get good shots for you guys and make these videos a little bit detailed so you guys know exactly what you're up against when you do jobs like this. It takes me forever to get the jobs done and I usually run out of daylight so hit that thumbs up button for me just for that simple fact these videos do take time and they are not easy to make and put out there so that you guys have all this good information and it makes your life easier when you're doing these jobs and you can get the jobs done faster When you have the plunger out here, you see that there's a spring on there and that's what will make the plunger come back and disengage your starter. There is a little ball right here that sits down inside the starter. So when you pull the plunger out, you wanna be careful because that ball rides right down in there on the end of this spring, just like that. You do not wanna lose that ball. You absolutely need that and you gotta make sure that is in there when you put all this back together. So make sure you keep an eye out for that 
if your starter is dirty and you're cleaning it out just keep an eye out for this thing falling out of there make sure you pick it up and you put it back on the end of that spring and drop it down in the hole so everything is working right now here's something very important that i want to show you guys and this is something that i'm not going to be able to do because whatever knucklehead took this thing apart last time to clean it they did not do a good job and they were reckless and careless but there are three phillips head bolts right here that you would take out and you can separate this housing here to clean all the teeth in the gears and stuff out from inside the starter well i unfortunately am not going to be able to really get in there other than just spraying stuff down in there and then trying to dump it out because these screws are very soft these bolt heads right here and they will strip out very easily and i don't know if i can get a shot of this but this one right down in here is completely annihilated because whoever took this apart before just like i said was reckless and careless and not paying attention doing a good thorough job and they completely fucked that thing up and stripped it all to hell so now i'm stuck not being able to pull that thing out so i need to just leave it be because i don't want to damage anything anymore we're just going to put this back together and see if we can't go get it installed on the truck and see what happens as for the rest of it though you can see we got some good nice shiny beefy contacts all installed in there everything is all cleaned up and looking a hell of a lot better than it did when we first pulled it off the truck so keep your fingers crossed for the best and hopefully this will take care of our issue and you also want to be very careful with these two phillips head screws here that hold your brushes in there because they are very fragile and can strip easily as well and you can see that this one right here whoever did this starter just mangled it so you need to take extra precaution with these screws as well while you're taking your brushes out to clean them because i had a little bit of trouble even getting this out so that i could clean the brushes inside here Well, you guys, that was a huge success. So the truck has full starting power again, and I am extremely grateful for that, that I don't have to chase down any wiring and look over the wiring harnesses and cables, power cables, all that, checking the grounds for good contacts, checking for shorts. I uh, I was really a little bit nervous, not, not gonna lie, because I did not wanna have to get into chasing wires and looking over all that crap, because you guys know that that can be a royal pain in the ass and very tedious job to do fortunately though we don't have to do that building the starter with new contacts a new plunger cleaning all the brushes and all the gunk and brush material all the old oil and fuel that leaked from our old fuel filter housing all over the starter getting all that shit cleaned up and out of there putting all those fresh parts in there did the trick I'm a little a uh, little on the leery side of having those brushes reinstalled back in there because a couple of them looked like they were pretty worn down but there's still some material left on there they're making good contact with the armature inside the starter so i'm not going to worry too much about it for right now you saw the truck fire right up instantly and that's after the truck has just sat for three days unplugged i haven't had it plugged in and the temperature is in the 20 degree range or so here in new york so that's three days of sitting and just a good old cold start for you after getting that starter all rebuilt and installed needless to say i think we are good for now at least get us through the winter time when we have warmer weather here in the spring and summer and then maybe we can look to put a brand new mean green starter on this old 24 valve and treat her well with a nice high-end starter that we don't have to worry about ever again or at least for the time that I own the truck there's only one thing left to do now that that is all done and installed and that is to run the truck drive it get it all up to operating temp and warm and see how she does after she's all warmed up 
to its regular operating temperature, see how it starts up after we shut it down and go into some stores or something for a little bit. So we need to take it out and give her some run time and then see how she fires up after she's all warmed up. But we'll get to that and we will report back to you in another video so that you guys know what the deal is with that. But for now, if you could do me that favor and hit that thumbs up button for me for doing this starter rebuild video that you guys heavily requested in the comment section of a few videos back. If you're new here, stopping in for the first time, hit that subscribe button, become a family member. We got more coming for you guys to watch. Don't forget to check out the links in the video description for all the tools and parts that I use on the 24 valve or here at the garage. I took the time to put those together for your convenience so you could find them easily. And I will see you soon with another new video. See ya.